Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. Well, it seems, it seems as if LeBron is once again pissed off another NBA player, but in this case, it's by someone that, well, I'll reserve my thoughts as we continue on the show. Now, you know LeBron James has this fetish of being known, of being, of of trying to convince everyone that he's the best player in the world, excuse me, ever. His fans also have adopted this same uh, crusade of his to convince people all over the internet and all over the world that LeBron James is the greatest player ever. And LeBron will go as far as even saying he's the, he's the best player ever. Something that has turned off a lot of NBA greats. Greats like, uh, 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 what is it, Isaiah Thomas and so many others have been like, bro, if you're the, if you're the great, let other people say you're great. You don't need to say it for yourself, but of course, you have people in media that are part of the clown show, the bozo show, and they join, well, I don't know what's wrong with me saying it. I don't know what's wrong with him saying it. I mean, he's just keeping it real. He's just keeping it real. This is where we are with it. So what happened? Yesterday, I saw a topic, and I'm going to give credit where credit is due because I'm not a hater, um, and it's from, uh, who, who is, Ticket TV was doing the show. Talking about Scottie Pippen is fed up with LeBron. Like, Scottie Pippen, what the hell happened here? So I went to Google to figure out what in the world was going on. And I found the article uh, of where Scottie Pippen was basically calling out LeBron James for constantly saying that he is the greatest player ever. So let's get into what this article has to say. It says that 39 LeBron James continues to defy uh age in the nba his recent victory with team usa at the 2024 paris olympics has fans buzzing pondering how much longer the los angeles lakers superstar will grace the hardwood the discourse surrounding james and his claim to be the world's best player has reignited particularly after scotty pippen the 59 year old former basketball icon expressed his thoughts during a recent discussion online hoops a reputable basketball news outlet on x shared a proactive post that showcased Pippen's candid critique of James's frequent proclamation of his own supremacy. Pippen, known for his straightforwardness, posed a thought-provoking question asking, if you're the best player, why do you constantly need to say it? James, whose illustrious NBA career is often hailed as one of the greatest, has faced mixed reactions to Pippen's comments. The former Chicago Bulls forward remarks sparked a flurry of responses dividing uh, fans on social media platforms. Some defended Pippen while others condemned him for his audacity. Among the myriad of reactions, one fan drew one fan drew parallels to the famed series Game of Thrones, stating, "Any man who must say I am the king is no true king." This analogy struck a chord with many, highlighting the age-old debate about humility versus confidence in sports. Conversely, another user. Uh, queried Pippen's uh, consistent critiques of James, uh, humorously stating, why is Scotty so salty all uh, the time? And then uh, finally says, additionally, a comparison surfers regarding Michael Jordan and LeBron James, a fan noticed MJ uh, was embraced by fans and media who heralded him as the best. LeBron has had to fight for that recognition throughout his career, often battling claims that he isn't the best, which may explain his need to assert it. So you heard what people had to say there. What are my thoughts? To just respond to that last one, I think it has nothing to do with that. I think it has everything to do with uh, insecurity. Anyway, let's get to what Scottie Pippen is talking about. Why do you constantly need to say it? Well, I think you're. I think LeBron says it because he's trying to convince himself that he is. LeBron needs to be it's like he needs po he constant positive reinforcement. He needs this constant stream of people twerking it up all over the place, knocking over drinks, slapping each other with honey, running up and down the hallway, just basically pushing chairs over, just basically, just basically losing their damn minds. It must, they must twerk. They have to twerk. They need to twerk. And they need you to twerk with them. They just cannot help it. And whenever he doesn't get that, he begins to doubt himself. And then he'll go as far as saying, I'm the best. I don't think that a person that's really about it needs to say it. And people who are really the real McCoy, the real deal, they have people say that on their behalf all the time. All the time. All the time. Like you see, okay, I'm going to take a shot at some people because it is what it is. If you're a high value man, for example, you don't need to go around telling people you're high value. They will know. You don't need to tell women you're a high value man. They will recognize one when they see one. 
But if you feel the need to constantly tell people I'm high value, I'm high, you ain't high value. You ain't high value. Do you know why? Because real high value men don't care to prove that they're high value or not. They are it. They don't have to prove it. Quite literally. They don't have to prove nothing to nobody. They are living it. And when you are that thing, you don't have to convince nobody of nothing. That's the reality. These high value men that some of these guys on the internet are hollering, I'm a high value man. I'm a high. It's all nonsense, man. Those guys are trying to convince people or it's usually people trying to convince people or people that are on their way that have probably been, you know what on, people have played them and now they got to feel like I got to tell you this and then it, nobody believes you. We all know the high value men in society. We all know the high value women in society. We don't need, you can, you can look at it, you can figure it out by just saying it. So if LeBron believed that he's the best player in the world, he wouldn't feel the need to constantly say it. He wouldn't feel the need. The reason he's saying it is because he's expressing an, a doubt that he believes he feels, or maybe he feels pe a, a doubt that people have of him. That's the reason why his Rich Paul and all these guys are always trying to get people to say he's the GOAT. Always. Always. And they are just obsessed with Michael Jordan. For somebody that's the GOAT, you surely are obsessed with Jordan. Last time Rich Paul was on uh, Gil's Arena, who were they talking about? Michael Jordan again. You pull up the quote of Michael Jordan anywhere talking about LeBron James anywhere. You can't even find it. Jordan doesn't feel the need to do it because he knows he is. He knows it. And when you know it, you are 100% comfortable in your skin. Now, in terms of Scotty Pippen saying this, well, Scotty has no credibility on this issue. Because Scottie Pippen is known to flip-flop on this issue all over the place. At one point, he'll say LeBron James is the GOAT. At another point, he'll say Michael Jordan is the GOAT. At another point, he'll say LeBron doesn't deserve to be in the same breath as Kobe and Jordan. At another point, he'll say LeBron James is the GOAT. And then at one point, he'll say he's the GOAT. Who knows? Who knows? But the question he brings up is valid. If you are that thing, why do you feel the need to say it? And then, of course, some LeBron fans will have no answer, so they go to their default position, which is... You're hating. Uh, depending on the order in which you're seeing these shows, we pretty much share with the audience today that Skip Bayless is now uh, joined Barstool Sports, right? Barstool's huge sports platform. I think at one point they even got a million dollars worth of game with Gillian Wallow. I think they were the ones that hosted there. I think they gave him a hundred million dollar deal last time I checked. That was a few years ago. So he's with a he's he, he's with a pretty big platform, and he made the announcement. At least I found out about the announcement on the podcast call. Pardon my take. It was a two and a half hour interview in the show, and the last since being published three days ago has about two hundred and fifteen thousand views. So there was a segment, I guess, in the second half of that sit down where they were talking with Skip Bayless, and it was a long part. Like maybe their conversation lasted somewhere probably like an hour or 45 minutes and they were talking about a whole bunch of different things they were talking about his time at espn they spoke about tim tebow they spoke about the dallas cowboys and then they started to talk about his fallout with uh his former debating partner shannon sharp now when they became partners back i believe in 2015 i actually really loved undisputed it was i watched I actually watched Undisputed more than I did ESPN First Take because I found that show to be more entertaining. I thought their topics at times be, uh, were, were a bit stale, but I found the show to be entertaining. I really started to lose a little bit of interest when Skip and Shannon would debate Jordan versus LeBron and Skip's points started to get very stale and it began they, they began to get quite repetitive. And I was like, okay, this is kind of getting boring because Skip wasn't really coming back with some good uh, rebuttals, but overall, I enjoyed that show a lot. But then there was a moment that took place uh, over a year ago where first they had the DeMar Hamlin situation where Skip and Shannon Sharp had a very, very awkward moment on television. And then, of course, there was a time when they were debating Tom Brady and things got very, very dicey. Uh, and some people felt like that was the final nail in the coffin in their relationship. And then subsequently after that, we heard that Shannon Sharp was no longer going to be on FS1. Uh, and that his last day was going to be the day after the NBA Finals. And sure enough, the day after the NBA Finals, he left the network. And then he went on to go join ESPN First Take. And then his show took off and he did the Cat Williams thing. And he's been riding high. He's been doing uh, very well 
for himself since that time. And then Skip Bayless, on the other hand, ultimately he lost his position at FS1. So what happened? They were asking Skip Bayless to kind of take us behind the curtains and kind of reveal where things went wrong. And more importantly, after they had that exchange on television, what happened immediately? What was it like? How did they interact with each other? And Skip basically set the record straight on their viral exchange and basically put to bed a lot of those myths of what we thought took place uh, after that exchange. So for those of you who didn't hear what Skip had to say, I want to play for you now and then want to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to Skip Bayless here. My point is, I loved every minute with Shannon, but we took it to levels of supreme debate where it, it went right to the edge and occasionally slightly over the edge of competitive Yeah, to where we got mad at each other. And by the seventh year, it's a long time, man. We, we had some great runs. We did some big ratings numbers, trust me, that will never be touched again in FS1 history, I doubt. God bless them, but I doubt it. But the point was that, yeah, in year seven, did we fray a little bit? Sure we did. Um, but I fought for him to stay and... I don't know what happened between Shannon and the people upstairs because I was not privy. Right. But but yeah. he went before I went, yeah. you know, and, and it it tore me apart. Yeah. I did not want him to go. And I told him the last day I sat with him in his dressing room and I said, I envy you because you're going to get to go do what I want to do. Right. I still had a year left on my deal. And he got pushed out the back door and it tore me up and I missed him. So, so what would happen when you would go? I, I like yeah. the, I like the idea of supreme debate. By the way, it's like a like it's almost like Nirvana. You've reached the higher path. It's like an <laughs> ayahuasca of debate. Yeah. You've, you've gone through the wall. True. But what would happen when it would get frayed a little? Like the the famous, obviously the Tom Brady that moment. Uh, when <laughs> that was talking, the moment. Yeah, that was the moment. But what yeah. happens after the cameras are off? Is it? Uh, is it? No. Uh, don't talk for a while. Like what? Tell tell us as viewers what what how that comes back together a little bit, or did it not come back together? I showed him from day one in 2016, shortly after you guys had started. Our first day was September 6th, 2016. You were... We were March, March 2016. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So you were about six months yeah, ahead yeah, of yeah, us. Yeah. I tried to make him understand because I handpicked him because I really thought he could do this and he can do it and did do it because Shannon works hard at the craft. He, he was always prepared and always on time and always there for me. And I, I love him for that. And I will be forever grateful for, to, to him for what he gave to me for seven great years or maybe six and a half-ish because now to these incidents, the, the one. Okay, so I think I misunderstood some of what he was saying, but what we're talking about Brady and I'm a Brady fan. I don't even know Tom Brady, but I mean, he won seven of these and I can make a case. He should have won eight because I still don't understand why Bill Belichick benched Malcolm Butler for the Philly Super Bowl. I, I don't get it. I, I've not heard a rational, reasonable explanation of what happened, but he played the most snaps on defense and then he doesn't play any snaps in the Super Bowl. And I don't get it. Something must have happened behind the scenes, but both Tom and Malcolm said nothing happened behind the scenes. My point is, it, it, it's hard to rip that. It's it's hard to it, it's it's hard to criticize that as savagely as Shannon began to criticize Tom Brady, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't get it. And so at one point he says to me, "You do understand I'm in the Hall of Fame," and I said, "Yeah, but." You're, you're not in this guy's universe. He won seven Super Bowls. Nobody's in his universe. And Shannon got mad about somehow I'm disparaging his career. Well, no, he won three Super Bowls and he's in the Hall of Fame. And there was some misunderstanding to it, but, but there was no lingering fight about it. And when we went to commercial, I, 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 I tried to show him from day one, when we go to commercial, I am letting all of it go. Hmm. I'm passionate about it, but I also know the show must go on. So I'm going to walk away for a second, as I always did. I walked over to my little desk, and I began to prep for our next debate. And I let it go. Um, P 
people who ran the show decided we should maybe sit down after that one and we did and we had a great talk about it and we hugged and went on to the next day so we were really good yeah um we, we got through it but that was the only day i can remember where he actually got mad yeah. on the air you could see it and that's where it gets uncomfortable where it's yeah. like the chemistry and, kind of, and i told you yeah once you cross that line audience is like yeah we're out yeah, yeah. so you heard his thoughts now I'm glad that Skip came out and said this because I was unaware of this. I didn't know that they had a moment where they sat in the dressing room and they spoke. I didn't know any of this. I knew none of this. I didn't know any anything of the sort. What also surprises me is that Skip didn't seem to have any issue with Shannon. But I think it's important that I point this out because he said it at other points in this, in this interview. Skip is of the mindset that, okay, good. Granted, I am not an NFL player. Let's keep it a football for a second. I'm not an NFL player. You are the Hall of Fame uh, NFL player, but it doesn't mean that I cannot have an educated opinion or I cannot be right on a particular issue. And I think that's a fair point. Yes, we may not be experts in the field, but it doesn't mean that from time to time we can't be right on a particular issue. I think that's true. And just because you play the sport doesn't mean that you're always going to be right on a particular thing. I give you guys another example in a, in a different in a different arena. Let's look at politics. Okay? Let's look at politicians and let's look at political scientists. Politicians, just because you're a politician, does everything a politician say, is it everything that he's going to say that's right or everything that his constituency is going to agree with? Well, hell no. No, 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 no. There is no perfect politician, number one. Number two, there are things that political scientists say, people that analyze politics talk politics that they say and that the people disagree with them all the time and that there are issues that they can be wrong and wrong with all the time and there are times i've heard various political scientists say hey man i thought this was going to happen and this happened i thought the debate was going to do this and this happened so it means that people can be wrong even though you're an expert in the field so to simply shut down someone and say well you know you never did it so therefore you can have an educated opinion that's that's wrong because just because you did it doesn't mean that you always have an educated opinion. You understand know what I'm saying? So Skip seems to have that position and it's something that he defends uh, 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 viciously. You know, he's not going to let you bully him out of a room and say, well, you don't have a yellow jacket like I do. So blah, 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 gold jacket, excuse me, like I do. So no, Skip, Skip is going to hold his ground. And I respect that. He, you know, he stands firm in his stands firm in his belief. A lot of people just give up their beliefs at the drop of a hat. Well, he played all oh, well, on one. He's like, yeah, but he said Michael Jordan sucks. Well, he played in the NBA, so he must be right. People just give up. People, some people just surrender their ability to process issues, think critically, and they just hand it over to somebody else to do that. I applaud the fact that Skip uh, doesn't do that, and I appreciate the insight that he gave uh, as it pertained to their viral moment, the viral moment that he had with Shannon Sharp. So, y'all know that Bronny James has been making all kinds of headlines. As a matter of fact, just yesterday I tuned into an episode. No, a segment, excuse me, on Gil's Arena. It seemed like they had some type of Halloween uh, theme going on there. And they were talking about Bronny James. Right? I think on the panel was Rashard McCamp, Kenyon Martin, Gilbert Arenas, and uh, um, Brandon Jennings. And they were talking about him, the attention around him, and all of that. And they were kind of making some points back and forth. But look, for any of you who've been following this Bronny story, you know that Bronny came into the NBA with a lot of hype. Right. And the reason he came into the NBA with a lot of hype is because of his father, uh, given the fact he is LeBron's son and also some of the things that LeBron has been saying. And because of that, you've been having various news uh, uh, organizations publicizing Bronny all over the Internet. They did that all all throughout uh, Summer League and even in some of the preseason games. I, I think the first preseason game, he had like a block or a chase down block and it was plastered all over the Internet. But then when you started to dig and look at the numbers, you realize that Bronny wasn't performing well at all. In the three preseason games, Bronny James, of all the active players that played in the preseason that were able to log minutes, he has the worst plus minus of a minus 40. That's Bronny. He's averaging 0 0.7 points per game, I think one rebound, one assist or so, and 1.7 turnovers, while shooting 9.1% from the floor. It's been bad. It's been very bad. Just yesterday we produced a show. I don't know if you guys have seen it. If you haven't seen it, I, I urge you to go check it out. 
uh, of some comments that Charles Barkley made where he was essentially saying that, look, he's not a finished product. Uh, they need to handle him a kid gloves. Uh, but clearly he needs some, he needs to do a little bit more developing. Who's another person that said, uh, said an another NBA hall of famer, magic Johnson says something similar, but when he said that some LeBron fans started talking about magic Johnson, all this, this old head talk, talking about his son, all kind of crazy stuff. Right. And in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all of this drama and conversation, the person, a lot of us has been wondering what they think is LeBron James himself, because LeBron is part of the committee that basically ensured that Bronny James made it to the NBA. Despite all of the ridiculous stories surrounding his path to the NBA, he was a part of it. Because I, in, the, in the article that ESPN published the other day, we're like, well, you know, uh, 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 I, Rich Paul, speaking of Bronny, well, Bronny, where, where do you want to go? He said, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is hearing my name called. Like, okay. So they were like, okay, uh, is you, time to do some workouts. You're going to be working out with any teams? No, I'm only going to work out with two teams. But I thought it didn't matter. If you're the second round pick, wouldn't you want to ensure that you give yourself the best possibility to show your abilities to all the other teams so you can have a, 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 a what is it, good stock going into the NBA? No, 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 no. I'm just only going to practice. For, I'm only going to work out for the Phoenix Suns and the Lakers. Like, but well, that doesn't make any sense when you just said it doesn't matter who calls your name. Then before draft night, you started hearing no team should pick Bronny. If you're thinking about picking him, he's going to go to another country. We're like, but I thought you said it doesn't matter where he gets. Obviously, this thing was orchestrated. You would have to be a, a, a bloody idiot to believe otherwise, right? But LeBron and his team have been a part of this. So what happened? A lot of us have been wondering, what does LeBron have to say about Bronny's performance, uh, performances throughout the preseason thus far? And it turns out we actually got an opportunity to hear from LeBron James. And trust me, folks, when he was talking about it, he was very, very uncomfortable. So what we want to do now is we want to play what LeBron had to say when reporters tried to ask him about Bronny James. It's only about a 30-second clip. I want you guys to take a listen to it. We're going to actually put up LeBron's face so you can see how uncomfortable he was. And then we're going to come back and continue on. Take a listen to LeBron here. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, I don't know if you're you talking to them. You got to ask him. As a grown man, ask him how he's handling it. You know, um, you know, and we go from there. But he's a grown man. He's a, he's a professional. He can handle it handle all those questions yourself, but I mean, we know why good or bad, why the attention is here. So you heard what LeBron James had to say. LeBron wasn't, wasn't comfortable with that question. As a matter of fact, he didn't want it. And I'm going to tell you why I know LeBron didn't want that question. Do you know why? For one, LeBron hasn't been tight-lipped about Bronny. LeBron has been talking about Bronny James for the past few years. As a matter of fact, the same LeBron that was reluctant to speak here was the same LeBron that was going out there putting out tweets on X or Twitter, basically saying, man, I'm watching League Pass right now and Bronny could look a lot better than these dudes I'm looking at right now. Or he went out there and said that, oh, Bronny could definitely play for the Lakers right now. So LeBron has been quite vocal about Bronny. As a matter of fact, during media day, I believe that was on September 30th, they were up there doing media together. He had a lot to say about Bronny. A lot to say about him. So LeBron has had a history of voicing his opinion about his son. But now when they ask him to talk about his performances thus far in the preseason, oh, you man, you, 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 better, you better go over there and ask him. You better go over there and ask him. He's like, but what happened? I thought you had all of this stuff to say. What happened? And I think what is happening is a few things. The first thing I think LeBron is going through what any parent will go through, which is if your kids are not doing good, you're not going to feel good. Right, you're not going to feel good and you're not going to be happy. So what LeBron is experiencing is something natural, right? I think it's a thing that most parents feel. If you have a child that set out to do something and you see that they're having some challenges or they're having some setbacks, it's going to bother you, right? It's going to bother you that they're not seeing success. So the first part of his initial reaction is normal, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. Bronny James is the 55th pick in the NBA draft. I think anyone evaluating Bronny dispassionately and removing their emotions out of the situation would have been able to tell you quite clearly that Bronny James wasn't a first round player. Everyone else has come to this conclusion. NBA scouts, people like uh, NBA former legends like Charles Barkley, uh, 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 Magic Johnson, and others. Most people believe that Bronny either should have stayed one more year in college or 
should go straight to the G League to develop his basketball game. Most people see that. And given the fact that most people see that, I'm assuming LeBron must have seen that as well. Granted, it's his son. I still believe LeBron had the ability to evaluate talent. So given the fact that Bronny wasn't this first round pick, you should have known better than to say what you said publicly. If LeBron feels that Bronny should have been on the Lakers, he's good enough to be on the Lakers, you say that indoors. You don't go put that type of pressure on your son and say that to the world. You don't do that. And it's these things, these things that have brought us to the point where we are now. Is these things. LeBron inadvertently contributed to the pressure that Bronny James is going through. That's the one part. The second part is this. LeBron has been vocal on a lot of things as it pertains to Bronny. Go all the way back to media day, which was just two weeks ago. Talking about his excitement, how it felt surreal. Even in their first game, it felt surreal and this and this. And the point is, LeBron has been vocal about Bronny. What Bronny is going right now, he's going through a difficult period right now. Bronny's probably aware of what's being said and he's also aware of his performances. At that point, I think LeBron could have not defended him, but said, look, Bronny is a work in progress and we're working to make sure that he gets where he needs to be. At that point in time, it's like you brought Bronny all the way out here just to leave him alone, just to leave him by himself and say, okay, you figure it out. Well, that wasn't the approach you took all this time. All this time you were promoting him, promoting him, promoting him. Well, now he goes through a difficult period. All of a sudden, go talk to him here and he's an adult. All of a sudden, now he's an adult. So what about all those other times? He wasn't an adult? Listen, this situation, as it's trending right now, will not have a positive outcome. And I think the person that's going to lose out the most in all of this is Bronny. Frankly, the night... LeBron and his son play together. Do you know who benefits from that? LeBron James and the Lakers. Bronny has zero benefit. Or if he does have any benefit, is negligible. The person that benefits the most is LeBron and his legacy and then the Lakers for having that moment in a Lakers jersey. And it's a damn shame that Bronny is being used as a prop or a sideshow. Just to make some hell. Yeah, look, there are a lot of people talking about man, it feels good. And I and I can understand to a certain extent it's it's pretty cool to see it. But but, but you know what? You know what? What would be even better is if Bronny James went off to have a successful NBA career and we removed our personal feelings of how good it feels to us. How about what matters to Bronny and what's good for Bronny? And less of Oh man, this is really going to elevate. I already, I've seen LeBron creators already making content talking about, well, at least Bronny James made it to the NBA. What did Michael jo This is all it is for these people. Another moment to prop up LeBron James, even if it's at the expense of his son. These people are crazy. Even if it's at the expense of his son. You have parents, some of them out here arguing for the man. I'm a promotion. I'm a promotion in position to see. I'm a promotion in position to see. Well, is he succeeding? Is he succeeding? If you had a business, an empire that you build, you're gonna promote your son when you know they're not ready, just because you want to have the feeling of what it will feel like to work with my son, because you know you're about to retire from the business in one or two years. And risk your son going in there and making all kind of mistakes? Or if you wanted your son to be damn good at his job, why didn't you retire sooner and start working with him the way Carmelo has? It doesn't work. Do you know why? Because you can't get to 40,000 points like that. You can't. You can't get to 40,000 points doing that. You can't stat pad all the way to the end. Look at what Carmelo's doing. If LeBron was serious about this, he would say, you know what? I'm done. Let me focus on making sure my kids are the best that they can be to get to the NBA. Hmm. Here's a thought. What a novel idea. What an idea that has nothing to do with LeBron. 
I know LeBron fans can't fathom it. They can't fathom it. This whole thing is a mess. The whole thing is a mess. And I think it is unfair what is happening to Bronny. But Bronny must be discussed. The way we discuss everybody else, he must be discussed. And the reason we're going to keep talking about Bronny is this. The more they keep promoting him like an NBA all-star, and they keep plastering him all over the internet, the more we're going to talk about it. We'll stop when they stop. We will stop when they stop. I don't really care about their father and son. I don't care. I don't care. Because this should be about Bronny. It's unreal. Imagine you as a parent and you're making things about yourself versus your kids. Wow. That's deep. Think about how useless you got to be. Usually when you're a parent, you take a step back. And the focus becomes on your kids. No, no, no. Not, not, not. No, no, no. The focus is on us. The two of us. Something weird about that.